Music money makers, especially to my producers, I know you're trying to sell some beats and you're trying to get them off really, really fast. But this is the thing. This is not a least beat type of video. We're going to go in heavy. We're going to make a lot of money in this video. And I got two strategies that's going to make that work. Currently, you probably don't have access to these relationships that I'm talking about and we got to build them. You're also not increasing your odds by being in the right place at the right time. This is probably belittling your sales tactics that you've been doing online trying to get to people and the thing is producers shouldn't have to go through this you kind of should know the market and that's the thing about the music industry we don't really know the places in which we can actually target and make and increase our sales and we should and that's what i'm going to go over in today's video of the music money makeover show hey music money makers welcome back to the show my name is casey graham let's hop right in and here's the thing we want to sell these beats we got two strategies we're going to use them we got to have a goal what is our goal what do we plan to get out of what we're doing? You get what I'm saying? A lot of times when you're going into sell beats, you don't even know what you're selling it for. You're just trying to get it off. And a lot of times when you sell those beats, you end up with no money, no producer points, and maybe some of your publishing. Or maybe you might just sell it flat out right there on the spot, right? And we don't want to do that. So let's attack strategy number one. Our goal for both of these strategies is at least $5,000 on the sale for producer points and 50% of our publishing, okay? We wanna make a real sale. We don't wanna make like a $500 sale or $1,000 sale. I get if you have to start there, but that's not where we are. We wanna find these artists that are either signed to a major, they're signed to a major indie, or they have some backing and there is some traction already. And even if they're not signed, there's traction that's happening on social media or there's been an album or EP or at least a single released already. You can kind of see where we're targeting. We're targeting the B-listers and we're targeting those on the come up because we want a sweet spot to where we can get some sales, especially if we're new. And we got to also beat out every new producer that's trying to get to them. Plus, we got to beat out the artists that also have relationships with the artists that we're trying to get to already. And we also have to beat their work ethic because right now you might not understand the demand that it takes to produce the beats for the industry. You're just in your bedroom producing them. And then now you got to step into the ring. You got to step on the main stage. So we have these odds and these things against us, but we're still going to make this happen. You will come out of that bedroom. We will make some sales happen. And now you're going to learn how it feels to truly play in this game. Now that we understand our goal, let's attack our strategy. We got to establish the market. And this is going to depend on whatever genre of music it is that you make. We want to find the market that's closest to us that we can travel to within, let's say, three hours. And I hope that, let's say, you're not somewhere out in the flyover states or in the Pacific Northwest and it's very difficult to get to a music hub. But we got to choose a music hub. If not, this strategy might not work too well for you and you may have to resort to being online. But we want to choose a city like Atlanta, New York, L.A., Miami, Chicago, Nashville, Dallas or Houston, any one of these major music hubs we can make something happen with, all right? It's all going to depend on your genre of music. We're also going to equip ourselves with two tools or two tools. We got to put two up there. All right. We need the QR code that we had last week. All right. And we're going to put that on the card. We're going to use that for our beats. And then we also need a hot link ready to go to uh, send to anybody or any uh, people that we come across who need this, these beats, these hot fire beats that we have. So the cards are gonna be for the people who don't have time to actually take down our phone number or us get theirs or get their email so that we can send the text over, all right? But it's still gonna be used for them as well if they do have the time. The music will be placed on a website so they can easily access it through the QR code or the download link. So if you're texting the download link, it's like, hey man, yeah, shoot, sure. You know, how can I see you the beats? Oh, uh, you know, uh, you can email or text it to me. Great, we're gonna use the link. And then once you send them the link, you're gonna give them the QR code. You're gonna give them the card. Yeah, just in case you lose sight of the link or you forget it, here's a card. I wanna make sure you can get to the beat so you can have a successful session. You see how we just blah, 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 boom. You get what I'm saying? So our presentation is a lot better. Now on this website, it's probably not gonna be your BeatStars website. We don't wanna show them a cart with a price tag. That's a no-no. We don't wanna make sure that we're giving, oh, this is how much we wanna sell the beat for. We don't wanna do this, okay? Now, I know United Masters does have some things for selling beats online, but again, we don't want to put a price tag on it. We want them to listen, and if they want it, then we can make the sale via a contract. All music will be copywritten beforehand. I just want to make that you aware of that. We're not pitching anything if it's not copywritten because I'm actually putting you in a battle zone. So this is going to be the danger zone if none of your stuff is copywritten and it's going to be primed for stealing and theft. All right. I don't want you to do that. All right. Our first person that we're going to target here is going to be the manager. This is always going to be the key person to target when you're trying to get beats off. 
You want to target your managers in the cities that you're working with. But if not, it's cool. We're going to do online first before we, uh, we, we dig into the city. So you want to find the name of that manager, who they're managing, you know, an email for them or whatnot, or an email based on the artist that they, you know, that they manage. The artist may have management emails on their sites. You want to get those emails and you want to target this manager. You also want to target them in the DMs of the social media. The DMs may be, a, may be a little bit more difficult to get to because everybody is DMing people and most people don't pay attention to that. So you're going to have to go a little bit deeper and hit the management emails. This process will take a little bit of time, so I don't want you to rush it. It's not going to happen overnight. We want to establish a relationship via the email. Ask them what's the best way to get beats to them. Please don't DM them the QR code. That doesn't make any sense because now if I'm checking on my phone, I can't scan the QR code on the phone. We want to send them the link. Once they say, sure, email the beats to this one. All right, great. I'm going to email those beats, okay, with the link that I already had. You also want to ask them, and we're going to make this email together. We don't have time to have a stream. Hey, man, what's the best way to send beats to you? I, I see that you manage such and such, and I know that you may be in the process of recording, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it, would it be possible that I can send some beats for the projects or the new endeavors you all have going on? Ask them, will they be in one of the target cities that you choose? Don't ask them that if you think that they or have a high possibility or inkling that they actually live there. Don't ask them that, but ask them if they're traveling to that city anytime soon and tell them, hey, I would love to meet you at a studio. Maybe you could take a listen to some beats. Maybe we could get together in a parking lot over lunch or just after one of your meetings so you can take a listen to my beats. I'm very serious. You sign, you know, you put your name and send the link. Stuff like that lets people know that you're ready to do business. Now, this is all online right now, and that's strategy number one. But if the relationship cannot be established online, if you cannot get the beats to them online, we still want to establish that relationship online. Let's say if you got the link, you sent them the beats. I mean, you got the email, you sent them the beats and they still didn't respond. We still got the relationship. It's warm now. It's not cold anymore. But if you don't get the relationship, you never get a response. Then we have to boost this thing up and we got to go cold targeting the studios. So this is strategy number two. Before we approach strategy number two, you want to make sure that when you step in, we got a clean physical appearance right here. And you want to make sure that the beats that you have on your playlist on the website are like fire. So in the first five seconds, people are interested. In 10 seconds, you, you sold. You know what I mean? That's how we want it. Have your QR code cards ready to go because we got to, bam, we got to hit them. And the better the card, the doper the card, the better the response, the better the perk up. It's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. And they're going to remember all this is happening in the physical now. So when you're in the physical, you got to leave a lasting impression. It's like, yo, this dude didn't come in. He wasn't looking raggedy. He was about his business. He was like, yo, here's the QR code, all of that. Now we're going to work our way into the studio. So our first step here and the first person we're going to come across is the front desk person. We want to talk to them first. We want to establish a relationship with them first. This may all happen in the span of 24 hours but let's go through it. You want to ask them if they can be, if you can be put on their roster of producers that they have. Cause a lot of times artists run out of beats and you just, you know, can I be put on your session musician roster? You know, can I be put on your, your, um, your roster of mixers or your roster of backup recorders, whatever, whatever extra skill you have production wise, ask them if you can be put on that list. Okay. We, what we're doing is we're just short. We're just building short conversation at the desk. What you wanna find out is who the studio manager is. Hey, who's the studio manager in here, by the way? Oh, that's Dave or something like that. Oh, okay, yeah, man, when's Dave in? I'd love to speak with him, let him know I, I'm a producer. Oh, uh, yeah, well, Dave is not in for such and such. Oh, that's great, I'll just come back later. Look, I'm thinking about doing a session with you all, uh, maybe to make, get some beats mixed, man. I'm, I'm really, I'm new in town. I'm just really trying to build some relationships here. You know what I mean? And I would love to do it at your studio. What's uh, what's you know what's one of the rooms I can use to mix some beats? Maybe in your downtime where you have a cheaper hour or something like that, I can do maybe some like sometime in the morning or whatever. You know, I, I just I just want to. You see how I'm, you see this? I'm pitching myself, letting people know what I want to do. I'm trying to book the time, and I'm actually explaining to you the strategy. I'm doing it to you right now on the on the on the show. If you book that session and you spend some money with them, this is going to give you more time to walk the halls of the studio. You don't have to mix anything. You can just put your beats on and play them, right? But this gives you access into the studio. So you're paying your way in. Once you get in that studio, you can meet any and everybody you want to. And the best time to do this is on the weekend. So book your time ahead of time so you can get in there on a Friday night 
or a Saturday night or whatever and just hang out. You know, if you can afford to book an eight hour block, great. But if you can't, just book what you can. Get in there. Once you're in there, as long as you're out of the studio, you can hang in the studio all night if you want to. You know what I'm saying? Meet everybody in the lobby, meet everybody in the kitchen or whatnot. And just, you know, shake hands and kiss babies. This is your time to do this, producers. While we're there, we also want to broker a deal with the engineer. We want to say, you know, hey, look, hey, you're an engineer, right? Yeah, cool. Well, look, look, I'm a new producer. I'm in town. I'm actually mixing my beats over here in the B room or the C room or the D room because you can't pay. You can't afford. You're not trying to pay all that money. Just paying something cheap and so you can be in there. You're going to tell the engineer, hey, you know, um, man, look, I'm trying to get some beats off. I would love to give you some beats. And they're really fire. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really good. But take a listen to them. If you like them, uh, maybe, where can I email you? You know, let me know if you heard some stuff or whatever, you know. And, you, and they're like, sure, yeah, man. Well, just email me the beats, whatever. I love to broker a deal with you. If you like the beats, maybe, you know, I consider you to mix these beats. We can work out some stuff on producer points. I can give you a point. You want to start selling some stuff you want to sell money if you will and this stuff is leverage so hey look maybe i can give you a point you know i i can get you in to mix my records you can do all my recording if i you know you know what we you know whatever we do this gives you more sessions and allows me to get placements you get what i'm saying and now that we have this established not only do we have the relationship established with the front desk lady and the studio manager is aware of us and we're in there spending money with them and the engineer is like, okay, yeah, this might be a good deal with this. Now we got a home place to be. We got a place to be. And at this point, they'll say, hey, man, you know, such and such is coming through the studio. They're always here all the time. I'll hit you up and let you know when they're here. And then when they're here, come through, man. I'll let you know when they want to play some beats. Okay, bet. Cool. We just made all that happen. And all that can really happen in a 24-hour span. Now that we got one studio, let's go to the next and do the same thing over and over and over again to the best studios where you can, where you figure artists would be. And then from there, we'll actually get to the artists and we'll get to the managers that we need to get to. And we won't waste time. And you'll see us start to fly by all the people online who are trying to lease beats when you're over here making a sale on $5,000 a pop. You get what I mean? So with those two strategies, you can win. You can sell more beats a lot faster, all right? It's not gonna be as cheap and as easy as sitting at home, but it can get you done. Scared money doesn't make any money in this game, and you gotta spend some money to actually make some money. So that's just what it is. And you might come out of this thing and say, hey man, I made a sale, what do I do next? Well, I recommend that you go ahead and get the back end of your publishing set up. Grab the 60 day record label to do that. Make sure you build the backside of your producer business with the 60 day record label, all right? The publishing side has to be up and you wanna be ready to make that happen. Hey man, they are trying to pay me on the spot. Yo, what do I do? Like, okay, what you don't wanna do is take a check right there on the spot because what you have is a crime scene that's waiting to happen. Don't take the check, say, no, well, you know, look, let's get the paperwork over to my attorney and then we can rock out that way. I'd rather do things that way, all right? Now, if this doesn't make a sale for you, so be it. But we gotta do things the right way. We gotta let people know that we're not in the position to be taken advantage of. Yeah, man, hey, look, I'll take that check, but hey, we gotta get the paperwork done. So before you write it, let's get the paperwork done. I don't care how hot the 5,000 is. Because if they're going to offer you a hot 5000 and no paperwork, they are getting ready to do something with this. And not only can I, I can tell you this myself, but I can tell you this from other callers who have also booked a call on musicmoneymakeover.com that this has happened not once, not twice. This is, a, this is a frequent thing that actually happens. And people are like, what do I do? Well, we can't do anything because there's no paperwork. You get what I'm saying? Well, I didn't make the sale, but I got more plugs. And that's the point. That's the point. If we did all that work to get into the studio, then of course you're going to get more relationships and more plugs. But we have to invest in ourselves and we got to do it again and again and again and again. You get what I'm saying? So download the 60 day record label, build the publishing back end of your producer business. Let's make some more beats. Let's get in the studio. Let's establish some more relationships and let's rinse and repeat the process. If you're slow moving on your feet, that's cool too. But you can't be afraid to enact some of these methods. Grab the 60-day record label and build your entire business first. Make sure your stuff is copywritten. And when you feel confident, get out there and do it. But this is what it's really going to take. Now, after you go through all of this, you're going to see that people will know you. 
You'll have that face card in there. You get your networking game up. You start shining a little bit. Everything's on the up and up. You're feeling good. You're looking good. You're making money at this point. You got you moving and shaking around the town at this point. You get what I'm saying? So it's as a producer, it's going to take some money to invest. Don't be afraid to do that. But if you don't do that, then we continue to sit in the bedroom studio. And that's not a winning recipe for us. That's the person that becomes bitter that says, oh, man, the band, they don't never do nothing for you, know. And we don't want to do that. This isn't a business where we can sit at home all the time. We got to get in it. We got to make plays happen. We got to network. But at least now you can see where you can travel from where you are, the bedroom, to being that established producer. These are two strategies that's going to help you sell some beats and it's going to make you some money in the, in, the, in the networking with the relationships. And this is going to put you in a winning position. All right, Music Money Makers. So if you make music, you should always make money. Visit MusicMoneyMakeover.com. Download the 60-Day Record Label. And I'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.